Good evening, Azeroth, and welcome to episode 175 of the World of Goldcraft. As usual, I'm your host, the Lazy Goldmaker of the LazyGoldmaker.com, and uh, welcome back to the show. If you're following along live, make sure you post your questions in chat so we can get those at the end. If you're not, then you can join us at or me at twitch.tv slash lazygoldmaker. I do this on Thursday evenings. Now, of course, the podcast is made available by my patrons that, amongst other things, can get seven days of early access to everything I post at thelazygoldmaker.com and my YouTube guide videos. So if you want to do that, then patreon.com slash thelazygoldmaker. Okay, so now we're going to jump into the episode. And uh, we're going to talk about something that I made a video about uh, this week as well. Uh, which is the question or some variant that always gets asked every week on the WoW Economy subreddit. How do I make gold? How do I make gold? Well, I've answered it like the practicalities uh, in the other video, how you can go uh, go forth from, from zero. Today we're going to look at the conceptuality. How does gold making work? What's my model of gold making? How do you figure out what types of items are profitable and what are the determining factors that you should care about? Um, so we're looking at the more mental framework like evergreen approach. And this is what I've done in every expansion I've played for, <laughs> for years now. And I've always been able to find good markets um, and make a lot of gold. So uh, yeah, the first question you have to ask yourself what do other players value? If someone is going to buy something, then that item needs to provide them with value. More value than just having the, the gold. So if they're going to buy something for a thousand gold, then they have to value that item uh, as more than one thousand gold. Or the amount of time that they needed to get that one thousand gold. Uh, so yeah, that's the fundament all gold making you would have to be able to determine what items have value um, and the value of an item is obviously influenced by a lot of different factors um, and these factors vary from player to player a world first raider will place a much much higher value on obtaining mythic eye level boes week one of of the mythic raid opening for instance than someone who's in a two nights a week guild like i am i wouldn't bother paying like more than two, three hundred k for an eye level mythic eye level BOE ever, because um, it's just not going to be the deciding factor for me ever. Whereas a world first radio, they'll value that at probably two million if they have the gold, because for them it's their entire reason to play the game is to absolutely hardcore min max. Uh, for those of you with a background in economy or uh, you've heard about it, an economist would probably be talking about utility right about now, the utility theory where people are they have a set of choices and they're trying to maximize their personal utility with their gold um utility is really just a fancy word <laughs> word for things they like um just like people in real life spend their money on things they like uh or things that cover their needs and things they like um it's the same in game a collector is gonna spend more gold on mounts worth whereas for a mythic raider they'll be valuing consumables gear upgrades and all that jazz Someone does, who does both will value a combination of things. Um, we can't know what every player specifically wants, but we don't need to. Because we, it's very easy to see the overall trends. Because that's what you see when you post stuff on the auction house. You see what you sell a lot of and what you don't sell so much of. Um, and uh, this isn't... Well, you could possibly make a, a, a theoretical framework for this. This is just more based on accumulated experience over a long time. What I've seen in general is that players on average mostly care about having their character be powerful, which means that anything that increases player power is something they'll be willing to spend gold on. This includes gear, enchants, gems, consumables. Um, and within this category, players are generally more likely to value permanent increases uh, more than consumables, so that means more players are going to be fully gemmed and fully enchanted than popping DPS potions on every pole in M+, for instance, um, or using that in heroic dungeons. More people are likely to get previous crafted items in, in the classic versions of the game than people are using flasks in dungeons, whatever. Um, so it's, it's a sliding scale, but in general, anything that gives you power for forever is more likely to, um, to sell. 
Now, obviously, in addition to this, players also value looking cool. This is one of the other main categories of things that people buy. Um, and you can just look at the booming skin economies in many of the multiplayer PvP games, like League of Legends, Dota, CSGO. Players are willing to pay a lot of real-life money to look cool in-game. And they do that in WoW as well. Um, and cosmetic items can be very, very profitable. But they have lower value than power-increasing items, even if they are more expensive. Because there are so many of them. There's only 11 different legendaries available for any given character in Shadowlands. But there's literally hundreds, if not thousands, of transmog choices out there for that same character. Um, so all the druids are going to be piling into the same three or four legendary slots. Uh, and then they'll be piling out into literally 100 different transmog options, depending on what they prefer. Um, so that just means that any one transmog item is going to have a lot less value because it's going to sell a lot slower. Um, and there's a lot less people who care about that specific item compared to something that gives you player power. Um, so so that's it. Like every TBC caster looking for the same three to four gems at, mo at most, whereas transmog collectors are going to be looking for completely different items and value them very differently. Um, and that's why sale rates are much lower for cosmetic items. They sell slower. Any one item is going to take you a lot longer to sell. Um, and this is also why mounts generally is the best cosmetic item in terms of sale rate. Why? Every mount collector will want all the same mounts. Um, and there's not that many tradable mounts in the game. But not every transmog collector wants all the transmog or even that specific one. Um, so the smaller number of items that demand is concentrated into, then generally, that's going to lead to higher sales, and that's also really, really good. I haven't really explained why sale rate is so important, but it's pretty crucial, particularly for people who are starting out. Uh, it's due to the concept of compounding from finance or economics. Um, essentially, you want to get your gold back as fast as possible when you don't have that much gold. If you can make 10% profit and you can get your gold back within a day, and you do that every day for a week, then that's going to leave you with the same amount of profit or extra gold at the end of the week as if you had done one item that gave you 95% profit over the material costs but took you the entire week until it sold and you got your money back. So the faster you can cycle your gold through the auction house, the faster you will grow um, your gold pile. And that's why power increasing items is always the best choice in my opinion. Because it sells quickly. Nearly every story I've ever read about players who achieve some sort of extraordinary success, like tip three months to gold cap, two months to gold cap, um, or hundred millions and like hundred million in a couple of months. Someone I think Dirty RB did that um, in 9.1. They do that by going extremely hard at it in power increasing markets. That's when they're hot. That's pretty much the only way um, to reach those numbers in a very short amount of time without having multiple accounts and being active on a very large number of realms. Um, so whether that's being first to market with Crafter's Mark gear, legendaries, or cranking out Darkmoon decks during the first weeks of an expansion, um, every time, every story you've heard about like that, or at least 95% of the ones I've read that are like that um, have been focusing on power increasing items and being uh, there and being extremely active when it's hot. Like we're talking 10, 14 hours a day, uh, literally doing nothing but cold making. Now, there is one other determining factor for how valuable an item is, and that's how easy or hard it is to obtain. If it's trivial for people to obtain it, then it's not going to be particularly valuable, even if it's very quite strong and useful. As an example, gems and enchants are dirt cheap in Shadowlands, even though everyone wants full gems and enchants on their characters. Um, in comparison, in TBC Classic, <laughs> like the, the rare gems that aren't even the best in slot gems are selling for the same raw gold value as Shadowlands gems, or even more than them in many cases. Um, so obviously that's a much, much higher percentage of, of the gold that a typical player will have. Um, and that simply could... Put because gems are just so abundant in Shadowlands. 
Um, I don't know. I have, don't remember exactly in my head how much ore, but you're talking about something like 20, 20 ore, 40 ore, and you'll have uh, a full set of gems almost for your character. Um, so the harder something is to obtain, all else being equal, it's going to be more expensive. Um, and if you're talking about the crafting market, then it's also going to be more profitable, uh, whether that's a hard to get recipe, hard to get materials, such as buying and pickup materials is one way that that's made markets very <laughs> profitable in the past. Um, or, or the materials is very expensive. That's also been something that has locked people out, um, such as what happened with legendaries. They were extremely expensive to level up. Um, and you can see this, I mean, the most valuable thing to sell in the game probably is a high-end gear, like Mythic Raid gear. Um, there are people selling Mythic Raid clears, but that's like, what, 50 guilds in the world that have the ability or willpower to actually sell Mythic Raid carries. Which makes the price for those astronomical, because it's very, very few people who can uh, even provide that service or that, that gear. And the gear is the best thing you can get in the game, so the people who are willing to pay that are going to will be willing to pay a lot. Um, so that's it. That's what you need to understand, or that's my opinion on what you need to understand. Gold making is all about making, or farming, or finding cheap items that you know that other people value. Whether it's because it makes them strong or cool, um, both things can work. If you're new, focus on items that make other characters powerful. That's where most of the gold is. That's where people are by far most willing to spend gold and where the gold is moving the fastest. Um, and yeah, it's better to make your gold back quickly and make a little bit of profit than to go for the big, big profit place that take a month to pay off uh, when starting out because you want to increase your gold. Um, and yeah, the last thing I want to say is very, very important. I cover this in my conceptions, misconceptions about gold making videos as well. And I think it's one of the things that really irks me when people do. Stop analyzing so much. It does not matter. Your realm choice is a lot less important than learning what actually works on your realm by testing out a lot of different things. Gold making is something you learn by doing, by engaging with your auction house on your realm, by testing your professions and figuring out when your competition is on when you get sales if you post uh, you can only learn this by actually testing things out on your own realm so you need to look for some recipes that are green in your professions craft them see what happens try to post them at a different time of day see what happens then do some cancel scans if you have to um, and then just learn from that it's literally Long term, it's way better to slam 100,000 gold into something that doesn't pay off and lose it all uh, than watching all of my videos put together. That's gonna, like, losing 100,000 gold is gonna teach you way more. You need to test things out. Take this as a basis to find items that are gonna be profitable. It's gonna be items that are useful to other players. Um, so, items that increase other player power, just look through guides on Wowhead. There's literally tons of items that are strong useful best in slot and chance best in slot consumables all of that jazz craft them see if they're profitable and then you find out what works and what doesn't so that's it for me this week um hopefully you enjoyed the the episode see you on the next one bye